first official ski vlog of the season. I think it's gonna take literally three hours to get there. the channel if you're new around here my name is Anna if you're not new welcome back welcome to the first official ski vlog of the season we're skiing Keystone today for the first time this season well first time skiing the season but also first time skiing Keystone ever we tried to go last weekend if you watched the previous vlogs you know the tea so go back and watch it if you want the tea on that it just didn't work out so we're back trying in this weekend and I feel like it's gonna be a much better experience because it's not a holiday weekend and the mountain is actually open so I'm feeling better about this weekend already I'm double checking the epic pass because that was our mistake last weekend we have the epic pass which means that we have access to a ton of resorts in Colorado we have access to three resorts unlimited and then a bunch of others during non-peak days or non-restricted days. So let's look. Yeah, it all looks good to go. 115 out of 140 trails open. I'm so excited. Wait, the door just opened by itself. That's really creepy. Anyways, I just packed my bag like you guys saw. I packed some snacks, water, made myself a coffee. We have like chopstick, deodorant. I'm packing my GoPro because I feel like that's the majority of the vlog footage that I'm gonna get today. Probably leave my camera in the car and then just use my phone and my GoPro for vlog footage because I feel like that's the safest way to go about it. If I fell and my camera was in my pocket and it broke, I would be really angry at myself. So that is the plan for today. I just wanted to officially enter this vlog and say welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited for this little like ski series that I'm starting. I never really see people do ski vlogs like outside of vacation or trips or stuff. So I'm really excited to bring you guys along to like each mountain that we go to in Colorado and share my experience and take you guys on the trails with me and things of that sort. So I have a feeling it's gonna be a good day. I'm excited to bring you guys with. I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog. And without further ado, we need to hit the road soon because it is 546 and mountain traffic is no joke. car for about an hour and a half now and the time just continues to go up it's funny because last weekend the conditions on the road were really bad so we thought that that's what's caused the three hour traffic that we were in last weekend and i would say that this weekend the roads are clear it's not a holiday weekend the traffic is arguably way way worse on this road i guess we're taking us6 which is supposed to be like a back road but i don't think that it's really a back road considering there are so many cars on this road at this point and we started off at like 7 30 arrival time we're now at 8 49 and it just continues to go up john has ski lessons today and he's supposed to be there by nine so we are a little bit crunched for time at this point i really thought that leaving at six o'clock giving ourselves three hours to get there we would make it 
but I think it's gonna take literally three hours to get there again this weekend, which is crazy just because it's not a holiday weekend. The road conditions aren't bad. I feel like maybe this is just the norm. Like all the locals are now just going to the mountain this weekend and this is what it looks like driving from Denver. I have no clue, but we are in like bumper to bumper traffic and we have been for the past hour or so on this road. So that's fun. We said the next time we would maybe just try to take I-70 all the way to Keystone and Breckenridge. It had us go I-70 to US-6, which is like a really cool road. I think I took a couple clips of it because you like go through the mountains and stuff, but it's a two-lane road. And so if there are hundreds of cars on a two-lane road, you're bound to run into some crazy traffic. I don't think I-70, I don't know if it would be much better, but it would maybe be a little better. I don't know. Because Waze had us going this way too. We've been, I've been looking at Waze, he's been looking at Google Maps and both have us going this way so that makes me think that i-70 may be worse but i have no clue so that's the update for now arrival time 8 50. hopefully we make it before the 9 a.m ski lessons if not i don't know <laughs> i don't know what'll happen also look at this sheep crossing sign oh my god they put googly eyes on it that's really funny It is not much less of a shit show here than it was on the highway. Literally so many people are here. We're in like a East Law, I think is what it's called. And there we have to take a shuttle and the line to get on the shuttle is literally like probably 30, 45 minutes long. I feel like this whole thing is just learning process. What time to leave, where to park, which Resorts to go to, so for my hair. It's all just one giant lesson. We're gonna have to practice some patience, for sure. Okay, let's get the show on the road. <laughs> clips that you guys saw of us skiing Keystone and I just feel like this vlog was kind of short and also it deserves like an official outro so I figured I would recap the whole first time Keystone experience and give you guys some like tips advice things that we would do different next time granted this is all still a learning process for us so take what I say with a grain of salt but this is just what we experienced and 
when we were talking to other people at the resort like what they were telling us so starting with the traffic going there it originally told us that it was going to take us an hour and 45 minutes to get there we knew that was going to be inaccurate because this happened to us the weekend prior that it said it was an hour and 45 minutes and it ended up being a three hour car ride it was the same for last weekend although when we were talking to people in the ski parking lot and like eavesdropping in conversations when we were in lines apparently if you leave at 5 30 so we left at 6 which is 30 minutes after which you wouldn't think that 30 minutes would make that big of a difference but i guess it does but apparently if you leave between like the 5 15 and 5 30 window you get to the resort much faster you get to the closer parking lots like it makes a world of a difference just to leave 15 to 30 minutes earlier or 30 minutes to 45 minutes earlier so we're gonna try to do that this coming weekend because John did in fact miss his ski lessons. We didn't get on the mountain until like 10.30 when we got to the parking lot at nine. The shuttles from that like far back parking lot were a pain in the butt. We had to wait in this massive line for like 30 minutes to finally get on the bus to go to Keystone. So it was just like a pain in the butt up until we got to the resort. And then once we got to the resort, everything was fine. Our Epic Pass worked great. If you do have an Epic Pass and you've never used Epic Pass before, don't be concerned with it scanning from your pocket. It quite literally does scan from your pocket. Like as long as the Bluetooth is on your phone, it worked seamlessly. It's a, honestly such a great system because you don't have to fiddle around with the pass, you don't have to worry about anything. The people in the lift lines, that's their job. They like have these little like scanning gun machine type situations and they just point it at your pocket where your phone is and it scans. If you buy a lift pass there, I don't know how that works, but for Epic Pass users, the Bluetooth is very legit and you don't have to be concerned with that. That was a concern of mine that I was gonna get in line and embarrass myself because my epic pass wasn't gonna work and that did not happen thankfully so that's the situation going there we're gonna try to leave 5 15 5 30 this upcoming weekend to go back to keystone john is gonna try lessons again because they couldn't fully refund him but they could switch him to a different day he just wants to get basically at the level that i'm at with skiing he's a beginner and while he can do the greens very seamlessly I think he only fell down like once and it was down a blue because I accidentally took him on a blue last weekend. He just wants to be able to like do blues with me consistently and potentially work up to the black diamonds and stuff. So he wants to get to my level, which is why he's doing lessons. All of that to say, we're gonna try to leave earlier next weekend to see if that makes a bit of a difference. I'm sure I will update you guys in the vlog. So if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe because lots of ski content coming the first of many many vlogs ski vlogs specifically that will be coming your way once we were on the mountain the lines were so fast lift lines were great i think we waited like max eight minutes for a line and that was nothing compared to what we had experienced the weekend prior at Breckenridge. So I would say the lines go really fast to Keystone. I think I said the majority of runs were open. All the runs that we would wanna do were open. It is a huge resort compared to what I'm used to. I'm used to East Coast skiing, so that's not saying much, but I would say everything was groomed really well. There was a great variety of runs, skill levels, groomed, not groomed. They had, um, what are they called, like the parks, I think is what you call them, where you can go and do like the tricks and stuff. Those were open, they had quite a few of those. We were able to ski the back bowl, which was really cool too. So overall, I had a great experience. I think the Keystone is very underrated. Like I don't hear anyone really talking about it. Whenever you hear people talk about Colorado skiing, you hear Aspen, Vail, Breckenridge, oh, Steamboat Springs, all those big resorts. And while I do think that those are probably more worth it if you're coming from out of state, because if you don't ski, there's still stuff for you to do and stuff like that. I do think that those towns would be more worth it if you're coming from out, out of state. But I feel like if you're in state, I really, feel like Keystone is so underrated. Like it wasn't that crowded compared to Breckenridge. All of the trails were great. I honestly had such a good experience and I'm so excited to go back next weekend. So skiing was great. I will say the food is just as expensive as everyone says it is. I don't know if I just don't remember spending this much money. I don't know, I just like, I guess I had never considered it because I haven't lived somewhere where I've been able to ski consistently every single weekend since I was younger. But the food is very expensive at Keystone. I think we paid like, I paid like $20 for five chicken tenders, which is absurd. Like that is an absurd amount of money for chicken tenders and fries. I didn't even get a drink or anything, just chicken tenders and fries. It was like a little plate of food. I showed a picture of it in the vlog. 
and it was literally $20. So I think that moving forward, some days, yes, I think we will just spend the money and eat at the ski lodges but i do think we're gonna try to sometimes bring our own food i brought snacks but we were talking about like ways you could bring sandwiches and like other things or get food after i don't know just the price is not worth it for the food that we got in my opinion that was really pricey so heads up on that but other than that it was fine leaving was a better experience than going the bus was really fast going back to the lot because it wasn't as crowded because we left it around like 2 30 i think we got back to the parking lot at 3. by the time we took all of our stuff off and left i think it was like 3 30 maybe closer to 4. so by the time we were on the road heading back we were grouped in with the rest of the ski traffic that was headed back to denver so we did hit a little bit of traffic coming back to Denver, but not nearly as much as we had experienced that morning. I think it was the perfect time to leave, honestly. I don't know if I'd leave any earlier or any later. If we left later, I would honestly say that we would just stay through dinner and like leave around like probably six or seven to really just let the traffic do its thing because I think that if we stayed until like four or five and then tried to leave, that would be peak traffic. I think we were at the front of the traffic and I think that if you left any later, you'd be like the back of the traffic. So if we left any later, I think we would just stay all day pretty much and go that route. So I liked when we left. I do think that it's worth it to just go early in the morning, get four, five, six hours of skiing in, leave around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon and head back to wherever you came from, whether it's Colorado Springs, Denver, surrounding areas because while you do hit traffic you don't hit as much in my opinion so that's that those are the things that we would do differently those are the things that we would do the same that was my overall experience i feel like this vlog was like kind of all over the place because i was trying to get used to like my gopro again i've had this gopro since i was in high school so i've had it for over nine years now i do not know how it has not died on me or has <laughs> given up on me it's like the hero eight or something it's like one of the og gopros and honestly the quality is fantastic for how old it is i like it, it's such a vibe i really really liked it and i liked the footage that i was able to get in the vlogs but i know what i would do differently next time and i know that i can talk to the camera and it comes out really clear i know the picture's clear um i have a bunch of like gopro equipment and stuff like that so i think next time i know what i will change for the gopro footage to get like more actual ski content for you guys so you have that to look forward to coming soon I honestly debated whether or not i should even post this vlog because of how short the actual ski content was but for my own mems i'm just gonna post it and i hope you guys enjoy and i hope you guys take something out of the vlog hopefully if you're coming to colorado if you're from colorado if you're new to skiing hopefully this provides some sort of value to you lots of ski content coming your way soon we're skiing keystone again this weekend we're gonna ski breckenridge probably the following weekend we have some other really fun ski trips coming up soon so I hope you guys enjoy make sure to subscribe down below if you're not already and give this video a thumbs up and i will see you guys in the next vlog bye guys <laughs>